So I was on the internet the other day looking for different topics to talk about on some of my platforms, in particular, YP for Lifey, a platform that I created because I couldn't really find women like me who shared my values, who understand the importance of, you know, being a well-rounded feminine woman. As I was on the internet, I realized, wow, it's Black History Month. And Black History Month is the time that we celebrate achievements by African Americans. And we take the time to, you know, focus on Blacks who have done great things. Now, I think that's wonderful, but how is that really going to help you in your life? It, it's not. It might give you a little bit of inspiration, but I really want to come full circle with where we are as Black women in today's society. And so this video, let me go ahead and put a disclaimer out here. If you are a woman that leads an alternative lifestyle, this video isn't for you. If you are a woman that believes that dogs and cats can satisfy your sexual needs, this video is not for you. If you believe that anything goes, there's no structure, there's no morals, there's no values that you need to have, this video is not for you. If you believe that being alone your whole life is satisfying, this video is not for you. Just click off. Catch my next fashion video. But for the rest of you ladies, in particular young women, I do want to talk to you today about how extreme feminism can take you down a road of destruction, especially in today's society when women have made great strides, especially in the Western world. And we are bosses and we are CEOs and we are supervisors. And, you know, I really can't think of an area in the United States of America where women are at the bottom. Now, I know people say, you know, overall, our income is not equal to men, but there are reasons for that. That makes sense. I'm not going into that. This video isn't about pay equality. Let's talk about Black women, depression, and where extreme feminism is going to lead some of you and you're not built for it because I'm not. So I came across an article. I'm going to put it on your screen since I couldn't do this video live. You guys know I've been having a lot of problems with the internet here in the Middle East, but I'm not going to sweat it. I'm still going to do what I have to do. So this article is called <laughs> Lonely Black Women Get Depressed More Than Men. And, you know, in this day and age where black women are looked at as strong and independent, and we don't need no man and we want to be single mothers and have children out of wedlock and not demand marriage and all these ideas that people have about black women because the statistics show that black women are having babies out of wedlock at an abundant rate. Uh, because it shows that Black women are the least married racial group. It puts us in this like stereotypical role. And that's why women like Lizzo don't help our plight. Um, all that mammying and, you know, all that, all those things that she, she is doing to make Black women really look like complete fools. And in particular, plus size women, when we're already kind of stereotyped and people already are making judgments about us, it doesn't help our plight. And so this article revealed how a lot of Black women are struggling with depression. And I already knew this because there are a lot of Black women that I have known in my life that have serious issues, you know, including me. You know, you guys know that I've struggled with my weight, I've struggled with discipline. It's not through, through any emotional issue. It's just really, I've always really liked discipline when it came to exercise and fitness and things of that nature. And currently I have... You know, not currently, but for the last year or two, I've been dealing with, you know, where does this lack of discipline come from? Because things I really want to do, I do. And so we all have issues, but we may have them in different areas. I don't struggle with depression. I don't struggle with extreme anxiety or anything of that nature. I feel one reason that I've been able to combat that is I do have a very strong faith. And anytime I feel anxious or worried or concerned, I really cast my cares upon God and that has always brought me through. Now that is not to say that clinical depression doesn't exist or you don't need help. Um, I'm an advocate for counseling. I have had counseling even with my husband. Um, I believe in it and I'm going to leave a link to Faithful Counseling, which is a Christian-based 
platform that you can use to find counselors who are licensed, which is so important to find a licensed counselor that is a Christian. You know, uh, I don't think we should really be dealing with worldly people if you are a Christian, because they don't understand, they can't understand what we understand, okay? They can't see it. It goes beyond their comprehension. And you really want to stay within not a bubble, but you really want to stay within a group that understands your faith and your walk and your relationship with God. So I will leave my affiliate link to Faithful Counseling. Like I said, me and my husband have had counseling at uh, a point in our marriage. I believe in counseling. It works. I think that it's a way for you to be very reflective about some of the things that you may need to change in your life. All right. So there are a couple points that the article uh, left me pondering about. And I want to talk about Black women and depression and how we always are kind of looked at as strong and we can handle anything. And that's not the case. You know, we really need community, friendships, love, marriage, family, whatever God has put in your heart for your life. And most of us are called to marriage because we're not going to be celibate. So if you're not going to be celibate, if you're not going to dedicate your life to your religion and to your community and not have, you know, relations, then you know you're called to marriage. Motherhood, that might be different. I don't believe everyone is meant to be a mother. Some people are mentally ill. They shouldn't be a mother. Some people are abusive. So the idea that everyone is called to be a mother is also a false narrative. But I definitely, definitely think most of us are called to marriage because we are sexual beings and so i think it's important to understand that there's probably a very small group of women we call groups like that like uh or people like that anomalies uh there's always an anomaly in any case and i think there's a very small group of women who really don't want male companionship okay so let's talk about this article uh the psychologist is exploring this this topic of how a lot of black women in particular are earning more degrees, meaning they're having less time to start a family or marry, and that might trigger some anxiety. Now, I don't believe this is this to be true. I got married in college. I am happy I got married in college. Um, I think there are extreme benefits to getting married young, although a lot of people, you know, would probably tell you the opposite. Uh, I'm at a point in my life because of the age that I got married at, where I'm pretty much able to do what I want. And I think that, that, is, that is, that's a benefit. That's a benefit of seeing your husband grow from a young man to like a man man. Like, um, I'm a man and I'm, I'm your husband and I'm, I'm everything that I always thought a husband would be. That's pretty much what my husband is blossoming into. And I and I can't wait to see what he will be like in 10 years or 20 years. And, you know, y'all y'all know I've been married for 14 years. We'll be married 15 years in June. All right. So, yeah, I think putting off marriage and having kids and all of that is, is not a good choice. If you know being a wife is important to you, if you know being a mother is important to you, I think it is the worst thing you could do to put that off. You could still explore your education and some form of a career. I think that there are issues to be explored as a woman with you and your husband when you do decide to have children, but I definitely don't think you should put it off uh, because as we get older, our fertility drops. I don't care that you see some celebrities having babies at 50 and 45 and some women getting IVF and not telling you and telling you the cost and, and all of the stuff that goes behind it. Um, everyone knows your fertility drops as you get older and it's just, your your body is really in a, in a better shape to have children when you're younger. So there are many reasons to explore marriage and motherhood at a younger age. Um, so this particular quote stu stood out to me. My female colleagues were afraid that they'd be alone, that they wouldn't find a partner of equal academic status. While African-American women are getting academic achievements at a higher rate, African-American men, they feel like they end up having fewer options, uh, which could lead to some degree of loneliness. So basically it's saying that black women are getting um, academic achievements at a higher rate than African-American men. Now, this, is, this may be true, but definitely Af African-American women are not statistically making more money than African-American men. So I do want to put that out there. Um, 
I don't think anyone has to be lonely. I think there is someone for everyone that wants to be married. We know some people will not get married for whatever reason. And so those people that God has called to marriage, I do believe that there is a, a man for you, that there is a spouse for you. And when you put it off for other things that really don't matter in the sense of they're not going to bring you the fulfillment as a woman that we need, like there is nothing that I love more, not money, not shopping, not traveling. Then at night when I get into the bed and my husband pulls me in his arms and I can trust him 100% because he is my husband. He's not my boyfriend. He's not my living love. He is my husband and we have a covenant and we've dedicated our lives to loving each other. No matter what we do with our careers, no matter what we do, no matter what decisions we make, there's no feeling, no degree can do that for you. And so that's what extreme feminism has done to black women. It has taught them travel the world, get your degrees, don't, don't start a family. Don't get a husband, sleep around, have your children out of wedlock. And what has that brought society? But terrible public schools, um, children who aren't being raised right, and women who are lonely and depressed. And if you do the research, it shows you how many women are on um, medication, like medication for depression and anxiety. Why is that? Because of the pressure to be a man when really we should be falling back and being a woman, okay? All right, so loneliness. Loneliness, he says, uh, can have little to do with being in physical proximity to someone, but research suggests that for African-American women, it can lead to much larger issues. So for African-American women, studies are showing that um, loneliness, the feeling of being alone, affects women more than it does men that men can really survive and thrive uh, alone, but women, it affects us in a different way. And I think it's important to know that because I mean, maybe it's something that we should be exploring in honor of Black History Month, where we are trying to elevate our life and be the best that we can be. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, and then I have a few other quotes and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with the cost of extreme feminism and really what I, what I think it has done to some women and how it's, really destroying a lot of lives. And I wanna save as many young women as I can with my messages and with what you can really have in your life if you just maybe tweak your thinking a little bit. All right, so a lot of black women may feel like they can't find a man that is on their level, but I think that a lot of people are selecting spouses at times in your life where it's going to be hard to find someone that you think is on your level. If you've lived by yourself for a long time, it's gonna be hard for you to live with someone else. If you've gone to the top of your career before you think it's time to actually get out here in the world and talk to the opposite sex, you're gonna have a hard time finding a man of any race that is on your level not just black men. And so I think that's the problem with telling women to wait and you don't need a man, girl, go get your education. Don't worry about men. And that's just weird to me. Like, no, we can pretty much do two things at one time. You know, we can know going to college, like I did, that I wanted to be married, that I was going to leave with a husband. And we can still get our degrees and explore whatever careers we want. So this extreme feminism that is not really needed in the Western world, I think is gonna have a lot of women alone with their cats and dogs at 45. And it won't hit you until you're older. It just won't. You guys know I'm gonna be entering uh, my 40s. Uh, a cat is not gonna do it for me. Next quote. Another issue, says Dr. Janet Taylor, a psychiatrist and life coach, may be anxiety among Black women about sh the shrinking pool of marriageable African-American partners. That says, she explains, Black men have their own sources of anxiety, depression and anxiety, at least as compared to women in this area. Looks a lot different in men. Men of color are worried a lot about how they are viewed. They're worried about their masculinity. And a lot of them in their 30s and 40 range don't necessarily know how to be in a relationship without going outside of the relationship. Now, I don't know where this generalization comes from that men, you know, 
they can't be in a relationship without going outside of their relationship. I, I don't know what statistics, there weren't any statistics in the article to back that up. But there are men out here that love their wives, are faithful to their wives, if we're talking about like being faithful. And there are men that are very capable of being in relationships. I mean, I see those examples all around me. I know a lot of women may not have grown up in a two-parent household, and they may have not seen those examples, but they definitely exist. And so I think that we have to be careful about the negativity that is put out there. Particularly with women of color, their loneliness, anxiety, and depression look very different than they do for women who don't consider themselves minorities or women of color. Women of color are typically told by their moms who themselves had issues with men that they don't necessarily need a man. But then the mom goes back and contradicts herself when the woman is not in a relationship or is not married. Now, I know this may be happening to a lot of women. A lot of women come from home lives where their moms made poor decisions with men. And if your mom made a poor decision with a man, that could make you kind of feel some type of way. Like you could feel negatively about men based on the fact maybe your father was not around or maybe you didn't have a good father or a moral father or upright father. You know, there's no perfect parent, but definitely there are some that were better than others. And so I think that you do have to look at your background and ask yourself, you know, what is my experience with men? Why do I feel the way I do with men? And also be held accountable for the men that you choose to procreate with and for the men that you chose to be with and the men that you chose to love. A lot of women don't want to be accountable. I hear a lot of women always talking about the men, the men demanded this, he did this, he cheated on me, he did this, he abused me. Well, why did you choose him? Okay, because at the first sign of anything strange, you could have gotten out before marriage. And a lot of these women don't even end up getting married. They just end up having children and families and there's no commitment there. Or there's no covenant there. And so I think that you have to go back to the history with your mom and your dad and your family and what you've seen around you and ask yourself, is this working how they're doing it? And if the answer is no, maybe you need to switch it up. Last quote that I thought was interesting is, however, Chang warns against falling into stereotypical narratives about Black women's lives. African American females don't often go about telling the world, hey, I'm very lonely, and express feelings of depression and anxiety, he says, which means there are decades of data on Black women's mental health that may not be very accurate. Only about a quarter of America's Black population seeks mental health care. Did y'all hear that? Only a quarter. That's not enough. That's not enough. With all the problems that we know the Black community has? No. Compared to 40% of white Americans, according to the National Alliance of Mental Illness. So that shows us that people of other races don't mind going out there and seeking counseling and therapy. And the truth is, some of us as Black women have issues. We have issues with uh, how we view men. We have issues with how we view ourselves. We have issues with our self-esteem. We have issues with, you know, um, our moral character. We have issues. You may need to speak to someone. I'm going to leave a link to Faithful Counseling in the description box below. It is a counseling service that you can do online, I believe through video chat or text. Um, you know, as somebody that is not in America right now, I love the fact that I'm able to go online and get help if I need help, if I want to talk to somebody, if I have issues. And I like the fact that this service offers you a Christian licensed counselor. I need to talk to someone that also shares my faith because my faith is how I live my life. My faith is what keeps me sane and keeps me full of joy and keeps me um, it keeps me happy and it keeps me in a state of knowing that God is never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me no matter what mistake I make, no matter what problem I have. And that's the same thing for black women. I think it's time for black women to deal with their issues. You know, there's a lot of talk out here about black men and their issues. And believe me, my, me and my husband talk about this all, the, all of the time. Black men have a lot of issues as a whole, but so do black women. There's a reason why you guys are having these out of wedlock children by men who have not committed to you. There is a reason why you cannot attract 
the right type of man into your life. There is a reason why you are depressed, why you are crying into your pillow. There is a reason why we are eating our emotions. You know, there's a reason why we have problems. And what I'm saying, do yourself a favor, Black woman, this Black History Month, and get your life together and start with therapy. Everybody needs a little bit of therapy. I remember my dad telling me that. My dad is a counselor, and he's the one who's counseled me through so many different things in my life, through, through our Bible studies and through our sessions. And he is a chaplain um, at a prison and work with many different men who have committed heinous crimes. He loves doing that work. And one thing he always told me is that everybody can use counseling because things have happened to us, whether it be in our childhood or whether it was in college or whether it was through relationships that have affected us. And so I really, really would impress upon you to go check out Faithful Counseling. If you know you are dealing with issues and we know, we know when we have issues. We know when we are angry, when we're mad, when we're rude, when we can't seem to hold on to relationships, when we can't build anything, when we're making poor decisions. We know when something's not up. And so that's what this video is about. This is my gift to you, Black women, for Black History Month. Get some help. Not just from a friend or from me or from other people. Get some help to deal with the issues that you have so that you don't have to buy into these extreme forms of feminism that are just not needed in our society today. In some parts of the world, yes, but in America, there is nobody holding you back. That, 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 even the idea of that is a form of not taking accountability for the fact that you put yourself out here in the world to meet the people that you need to build a community with. It does not erase the fact that you have physical needs and emotional needs that really only companionship can fill. Children can't fill the gap. Friends can't fill the gap. There are some gaps. And I love children. You guys know I'm an educator and I can actually see myself possibly adopting one day or um, if I if I didn't want to have my own you know, children, I could see myself like being a foster mom and doing those things. There are some holes that cannot be filled by a child, though. There are some holes that cannot be filled with friendships or sorority sisters or all the things that I do in my life. There are some things that I can only get satisfaction in from my man. He can only bring that to my life. He can only bring that companionship, that physical touch, that strong masculine energy. We balance each other so well, that, that, that flow. Uh, you can only get that from a man and, and most of us want that so if you know you want to be married you want to be a mother you want these things why buy into the slut walk who wants to marry a slut what masculine man really wants to marry a woman who's going to the slut walk unless he's a beta male simp okay why buy into these extreme forms of sexual freedom that don't help you if they're not healthy for your body. Why do that when you know you just want to be somebody's wife? You want a, a, a career, your own business. Maybe you want to be a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife like me. Maybe you want things for your life. You don't have to be liberal like society is trying to push on us. It's okay to hold on to your traditional values. And when you buy into extreme feminism, what is showing us in the statistics, in particular for Black women, is that we end up lonely and depressed. Do you want that for your life, young ladies? Let me know. I'll see you in my next video. And I will link that article below.